So when I found her channel and she was giving advice, you know, never to chase men. And she was talking about what it really means to be a woman. And like this all really resonated with me. And like no, I don't, I don't know. No woman in my life like ever told me any of this. The closest person to tell me this but he didn't really break it down on from a woman's standpoint it was my cousin my cousin was like running down to me like about how men are and how you should conduct yourself around men and you know what he looks for my cousin is like really funny like he'll tell girls the game the dating game he'll break it down for them and then he'll play it with them because he's like i want to give them a fair chance at the game <laughs> so so yeah, like my mom and my sister saw me like chasing after guys in like high school and they would just laugh at me. But they never like told me like, you know, you're not supposed to do that. That's not how male relationship dynamics work. And so I was just like clueless out into the world, you know, not really knowing how to socially properly engage with the opposite sex that was like a a symbiotic relationship you know i i had no idea but i knew something was greatly wrong i just knew something was wrong in my heart like i knew something was wrong with the environment around me what i was seeing in like high school and the kids around me i just can tell like there was so much information missing that we did not get you know i grew up without grandparents i don't know if she was a pikmishka but you know, grandparents are wise and they teach you things, but my grandparents died before I was born or before I was like one. I think I have a picture of them holding me my on my dad's side. So they were like gone before I was even born, before I was even born. So I didn't have like that wisdom from my ancestors that, you know, people say back in the day, things were passed down. So you won't be out here looking like a fool in the world. So yeah, I was looking like a fool out here. I was like, I was trying to like, I felt like I was like crawling through the dark and just trying to find my way to the light. And I would actively like go out in my city and try to find the answers, try to connect with people, connect with people of different backgrounds, connect with people of the same background. And it, I felt like nobody really wanted to share with me wisdom. And I felt like most people didn't know. They were just as lost as me. I think that's how my family is. They didn't know they were just as lost as me running on a program that was not to their best interest. And the people who did know, they did not tell me. They were like, I'm not gonna help this girl. Maybe she'll get ahead of me if I help her. And so they just didn't say anything. And when I did meet women, like sometimes I met beautiful black women who were just the embodiment and carrying around the energy. Like I wish I saw more in my family and in my environment and in my culture. And when I would see these women, I would like ask them so many questions. I would ask them what they do for work and all this other stuff. But I never really, I never really asked them the right questions about, you know, their husband or you know the dynamics in the family so i was like clueless unfortunately but then i came across your seven's channel i watched it religiously everything she was saying resonated with me i was like this is the information i should have been taught in like kindergarten and it's funny because i had guys like try to take advantage of me since kindergarten like like even in kindergarten, oh my God, this guy would try to get my cookies. He would try to talk to me during nap time. It was so gross. Like it was just a mess out here. And I felt like I had no fair chance. Like um, nobody was helping me and nobody, I don't know. I was just surrounded by pygmishkas. Like everybody was a pygmishka and I was surrounded by them. Pygmishkas and dusties. And this kind of, I was socially handicapped as well. My dad, he was like crazy about me. Like he would yell 
if dudes tried to call the house and when I was like in seventh grade he would get so mad and be like she can't talk to any boys she can't go to any sleepovers like he would be screaming and yelling that I can't do anything I can't do this I shouldn't be talking to any boys in the neighborhood da, 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 da. so this really socially handicapped me because they were like really adamant like a tyrant about me not talking to guys right so this socially handicapped me because I, did, I didn't know how to like talk to guys because I didn't have any practice in like high school. There were like no guys, like strictly no guys. And so I was just like, I don't know, I felt dumb when it came to social, social dynamics like that. And so when I started following she was advice, I was a hundred percent like listening to what she said i was taking it all in i was practicing what she said practicing being you know more in my feminine energy not chasing you know being a lady learning how to be a lady and just you know put your best foot forward in the world and not to just like give all of yourself away and so I joined her Facebook group. She had a group on Facebook. It was a, it cost a fee to join and I joined it. I'm still a member to this day. And I can say that thank God for this group <laughs> because nobody taught me how to dress either. Nobody taught me how to really do my hair. And I feel like I can't help but feel like that was done deliberately because they, again, they didn't want me to attract all this attention. They didn't want me to be better than them. They felt some type of way when I attracted attention or maybe looked better than them. So I, I have to address that I was brought up with around women with low self-esteem. And I'd be lying if I say I wasn't but i'm so thankful that i had the intuitive knowing that something was wrong and after seeing how shira interacts with her daughters and their family dynamics and after going to college and seeing how other girls families are that's when i knew like i didn't have the best family i may have grown up in a toxic household and that made sense why I felt so lost and even neglected with not being taught how to be a lady or do my hair or dress or things like that. And uh, the main thing I learned about her advice in the beginning was how to put myself together. I was kind of like all over the place. I had like this really funky style of wearing like super colorful, bright clothes Y'all, I looked in crazy. <laughs> like I was wearing like these thigh highs and skirts and I was just all over the place. And nobody really said anything to me except this one girl. This one girl in my middle school class, she called me out and I'll never forget that. Like we all used to hang out at the movies and she was like, why would you come to the movies dressed like that? Like you're at the movies. And I'll never remember, I'll never forget she said that. She called me out and she had every right to because I was dressing kind of crazy, y'all. I had like no guidance and I think she knew something was off. And you know, the thing is like if people just like, I don't know, like people, I think people realized my like behavior and the way I dressed and they knew something was off, but they didn't address it or they didn't know how to address it. So <laughs> that was part of the problem too. But um yeah, my dressing style. I would I would get advice from these women in the Facebook group about how I was dressing, how my hair was, like even down to the color of my nails, my jewelry, like just oh, I don't have any earring bags. Just like everything. Like they really helped me. <laughs> They helped me from stop looking like a fool out here because, well, I wouldn't say that. I thought I looked like a fool, but it wasn't that bad. I, they just helped me to refine my image. And that made me feel so much more confident because, you know, I would see women on TV and I'd be so inspired in different 
like movies like Clueless and Jawbreaker and I wanted to dress like that. I thought that was so cute. It matched my style. I loved it. But I didn't really know how to. Like I would buy shirts and bottoms that didn't match and it just wouldn't look good. And these women like gave me advice on what shoes not to wear, what shoes would go good with my outfit, color coordination, my hair, everything. I used to always try to do color in my hair, but I found out I look better with black hair. Game changer. So I want to thank her, you know, for starting that group and just that finding that community of women who actually cared to help because that was so foreign to me. The women I was surrounded by and grew up with, they wouldn't really help. They'll be like, oh, you look fine. Or they'll be like, laughing at me and not really helping me so that was such a beautiful moment for me to be around that type of feminine energy to have access to those type of women where they really wanted to help another woman and uh growing up in new orleans you know women can be really competitive against each other in the black community they can be really mean they can be really nasty and i for a long time, I had no idea what was going on or why I would get treated, you know, like a stranger sometimes to, to women. Like they wouldn't, like I did, never felt like that heart to heart, like friendly woman vibe. A lot of people would see me as competition and yada, yada, yada. But um, another thing I really learned about Shira advice is what not to do what not to do so as a woman as a feminine woman a woman who is committed to being the best version of herself and living her best life what not to do is number one with everything because you know i really learned that being a woman is just about being it's about just existing in your own divine right and I was doing too much and I think I was doing too much because I was trying to find I was trying to find that like sisterhood connection that was missing so a lot of schooling and some family dynamics who are you know really don't know what they're doing and just running off of what society tells them to do. They teach you to do, 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 go, go, go. You know, they teach you if you want anything in life, you got to work hard for it. You got to go after it. And so I thought that applied to like everything and it didn't. That is not the natural way for things to work between man and woman. And so I was really like, confused about that because you know my mom was always like you know you gotta work hard she was always like life is hard stay away from boys <laughs> and that's pretty much all I got and uh, she really like she was teaching it really taught me how to love myself it really taught me what true self-esteem means and I'm so thankful that I was smart enough and intuitive enough at a young age to know that something was wrong with what I was seeing around me. You know, in my community, there were so many girls getting pregnant and then their life would just stop. They would end up in the city forever, just being a baby mama on section eight. Um, a lot of girls, they wouldn't have aspirations to go anywhere outside of New Orleans. They just wanted to stay there for life. And, you know, that never resonated with me. I always wanted to do more, be bigger, go places, expand. I always wanted to listen to different types of music, explore different places and people and things. I always had that, like, worldly view, the worldly desire to see what's out in the world. I always had that within me. And everybody around me was more like, they were more like homebodies. They were more like 
oh, you know, stay small, stay in your box, kind of do what you're told, don't break the rules, da 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 And, you know, this led me to feeling depressed because I couldn't find anybody that I resonated with. I couldn't find, I felt like everybody was trying to strip me of my self-esteem. They were trying to keep me down, keep me in a box. They were trying to tell me like, um, I don't know, <laughs> but I always felt like attacked for some reason. And even with friends, they were never supportive. I just felt like the whole, this whole system I was born into was just faulty. And I knew that at a, at a young age, I was, I felt depressed at a young age. Like I was crying. I had like the sad face I would see in pictures. Oh my God, don't talk about the pictures I took at church. Y'all, the pictures I took at church, you should see my face. Like I always had like a frown. I had like this confused look. <laughs> like my face told everything. And I feel like that's why I got attacked so much as a child. Even adults would like not treat me well as a child. And I feel like that's because my face showed what I was feeling and I knew something was wrong. Like I knew the school systems wasn't teaching people what they needed to know to be successful in life. And one time a teacher even cursed me out just from looking at her, just from looking at her. I made a lot of adults mad as a child just from looking at them. And that's when I knew something was wrong too. And that made me really emotionally dysregulated and caused me trauma. Cause I'm like, why are adults treating a child like this? And I didn't even say anything. Like all I did was look at them. And my teacher was like, what the hell are you looking at? And I just kept saying, I didn't do anything. And she was just angry. But you know, yeah, that's the environment I grew up in. It was like a twilight zone. I felt like I was born into a world where it was a joke. Like, I was like, what the hell is this? Like, nobody's teaching me the right way. I just knew everything was wrong. My parents were a bit off. They weren't really like, I don't know. They, I felt like, you know, in order to love a child, you have to have that self-love first instead of wanting to control them or project your insecurities onto them. So yeah, that's how I felt, you know, growing up. But I found our channel and not only did it teach me how to put myself together well, but it taught me to strengthen my mentality because there were people who saw my potential, you know, and I felt like, I, f I feel like in the black community, like in today's time, people, they learn to like break you down first to build you up, but that's a very like masculine way of doing things and making people strong. Like, like, yeah. I guess that's like a military style, like maybe like a, you know, MK Ultra type of style to break you down, get you, lower your self-esteem and then build you back up. I feel like that's how a lot of people's parenting is. That's how a lot of, of the schooling is. That's how a lot of the programming is. And I feel like that's very unnecessary for a young lady to, to do that. I feel like that's more, I feel like that might be better for a male with a big ego when they're first born to get the ego in control and then build them back up. But I feel like, you know, that type of parenting, that type of teaching, that type of behavior, you know, is very damaging for a young lady because young ladies need to be poured into from birth to have that solid self-esteem. And I feel like that's where that's where things were missing, you know? So <sighs> this is all just a hot mess within my community because it's been passed down from a few generations of, I don't know, maybe since slavery, passed down of 
you know, taking the beating and not speaking up and staying quiet and putting other people before yourself instead of filling up your cup first before helping others. And she would really open my eyes to that about how you have to be 100% right. You have to be strong in your mentality and feel good within your body in order to help the next person. Because if you're helping somebody and you are weak and you're sick, you're just gonna bring yourself and that other person down. So, oh my God, even in jobs, some jobs I had like were horrendous. Like people would be like so nasty and so rude, maybe because I looked vulnerable, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, like, I'm not the type to like, yeah, it will hurt for a while, but I'm not the type to really be like, I dealt with that so much from a young age of people trying to put you down and then bring you up. I got to a point where I was like, okay, I see what you're doing and it just makes you look stupid because why would you have to tear somebody down if you're already confident in your own right? And so I never verbalized these things. God, I wish I had. I wish I had verbalized so much that I didn't. I was taught to be quiet, not talk when adults are talking. I got in trouble for speaking my mind, got spanking sometimes. And that really, I feel like that really like uh, kept me back. That really handicapped me because why shouldn't I speak my mind? I want to speak my mind. I want to express myself. That is my right as a human being. And I don't know why teachers, parents, and jobs would teach people not to express themselves. Like, what is this, a cult? slavery abuse neglect like no that's disgusting and ugh, i just hope to never be around anybody who had that type of mentality or who wanted that for me just to be quiet and take on all the abuse in the world like that's disgusting and ugh, i don't know what was the people the people around me like, what was their motive for wanting me to be like that? I'm like, were they like sick and like sadistic? And they cover that up with saying, I love you all the time. Like, that's so weird and cringy. <laughs> and then people are like, why don't you call? Why don't you call? I'm like, why the hell would I? After all of that, I went through, like, come on now. So moving on, um, what else did a Chira Sevens teaching teach me? So my journey about the level up. So I did everything. I did everything she suggested. I wanted to better my life. I wanted to meet people who could connect with me on a deeper level. I probably didn't go to the right places, probably wasted a lot of time. But, um, you know, I put my best foot forward in my looks, my demeanor. I refine myself, the way I speak, the way I come across, the way I relate to others, what I say, what I don't say. I went out to places alone. Uh, this was, this really upped my confidence. Going out to places alone and meeting people really upped my confidence. Now, I have to say, I didn't meet anyone worthwhile during going out and what she called freestyling, getting dressed up, going out to a nice restaurant, just enjoying your time, enjoying the ambiance. Uh, there was this one time this gentleman invited me to like eat with him, but I declined it for some reason. I don't know, I was like, I didn't want to seem too eager, so I was like, I'll see. <laughs> and then, I don't know, I just never did. And that was at a really nice restaurant in Metairie, Louisiana. I don't know why I declined that. Anyways. Um, you know, freestyling, <laughs> freestyling is fun. And I do believe you can meet and connect with genuine, nice people who are what you're looking for. However, you know, me being in the city of New Orleans, mm, not the best city to spend your 20s in, unless you are already in 
the circle of like Catholic schools, people who are wealthy. That's like the only way you'll be set up to meet someone with actual money. Because in New Orleans, there's just so many, there's so many party people and the people who live there are typically like, not the classiest, I'm sorry to say that, but they're not the classiest. They prioritize going out to bars, partying, and they're just not, they're just not serious. And the ones who are serious, you have to, like I said, typically you have to grow up in that community, grow up in the Catholic schools, go to the best churches, go to the best schools, the best colleges and all of that. So I was just like kind of willy nilly out there going to the best restaurants and I got a whole bunch of compliments, met some people, but I'm not like some of these girls who met their husbands out. That never happened for me. And I'm okay with that. Like that was, that would have been nice. I don't know, but I feel like now that I've been following her advice for like eight years, I'm so happy with where I am right now. And um, I don't think, I just haven't, I don't know, that, that, uh, like, meeting somebody who is a provider, who, like, spoils you and takes care of you and spends money on you and live after, and you live a life of luxury, that has never happened for me. I'll be completely transparent. I have never met a man who, uh, wanted to do that for me. However, I have met men who took me shopping, gave me gifts here and there, but nothing like, let me take care of you, I didn't want you to work, nothing like that. I have not been that lucky and uh, that just hasn't happened for me. That hasn't been my experience. But I have met, you know, people who treat me nice, they complimented me, maybe took me out on a date, maybe bought me something, took me shopping here and there, but that's about it. And now that you know i've been following her advice for some time i'm really happy with where i am in life like like i like i'm content like i'm living my dream like my dream was to get out of new orleans my dream was to get not live with my mom for the rest of my life my dream was to get in a space where i felt safe that i could decorate and breathe without being ridiculed, harassed, or put down. And, you know, I did let go of a lot of friends. I let go of friends who kind of played that petty game of trying to... I know a lot of people relate to each other like this, but I personally don't like it. Like, like going tit for tat with each other or like getting into it. Like, I just don't like that. I'm all about peace. And I feel like this really hurts my dating life because I know a lot of guys love chaos. They love girls who, you know, kind of give them some drama. And I'm just not like that. Like I'm a very peaceful person. I'm a very calm person. I, I don't know, I used to be like really quiet. Sometimes I was really extroverted when I was little, but I feel like I was only extroverted because I was trying to fit in with the other kids. So I don't know. And what I found about her advice, you know, she does tell a woman to act a certain way, but at the end of the day, you have to be yourself. And I'm not saying like be yourself like farting and like being sloppy and like eating like a bunch of food at once and cursing and saying like foul things and just saying whatever comes to mind. I mean like be yourself and if you can't keep up the push and pull game with the man, like if that's not in your genuine nature, it's not gonna work. And that's what I found out about her advice. Like if you're naturally narcissistic, yes, this advice will work for you. If you're naturally like psychopathic, if you're naturally, you know, all about competitiveness and winning, like, yes, the game will work for you. You probably will have men at your feet ready to give you everything. I don't know. I haven't experienced that. But if you're more like, you know, 
naturally like reserved in not reserved in the way you dress or nothing like that but reserved in your relationship dynamics then a lot of men will probably find you boring and go for the next chick who will be more exciting and who will like uh, mess with their ego a bit. I mean, you know, I've tried to do that as well. But like I said, it's not something that comes naturally to me. So I have found that, you know, with all her leveling up advice and all of her you know, advice she gives with how to conduct yourself and dating and how to be with men. I found that it never, like, even when I did play the game, I felt like men saw right through me. I felt like they knew, like, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't this, like, man eater who would, like, bust their balls and you know, I know a lot of guys love that, the challenge and going back and forth, but I I can do that, but I don't feel like it's congruent with who I am to my core. And I feel like that's why maybe I haven't um, met someone who, like a lot of girls, they go out freestyle and they say, oh, I'm engaged, I met my husband and that's work for them. But I feel like that's where um, that's where I'm still single. That's why I'm still single. But, um, I don't know. I'm really happy with how far I've come. I'm happy with who I am. I'm happy with where I live. I'm, I mean, this is all I know. <laughs> it's not like I've had a taste of being in a mansion, being taken care of and all my bills paid. I don't know what that's like, but I'm so happy not to be in my hometown anymore to have my own place to be content, you know, make my own money and not have to play the game all the time because I did find it exhausting. It was exhausting for me. And honestly, I don't know how long I can keep the game up, especially in a marriage. Like, you know, if you're trying to be married for life, like that's a never ending game you have to play. And for a sensitive person like me, you know, I feel like that would cost me some of my soul in the end so some of these girls don't have souls so it's easier for them you know like i said it's easier if you're more narcissistic if you're more psychopathic if you can get down if you can get on that level with the man where you you both are playing the same game then you are more likely to take her advice apply it and win and like I said, I feel like a lot of men see right through me. They see, oh, maybe she... And I feel like a lot of people underestimate, underestimate me too. I'm not a complete softie, but I'm not a complete savage either. I'm like in the middle, but more on the soft side. <laughs> but honestly, like I can be savage, but when I am savage, it's like too much. It's like over the top. And... I'm still trying to find that balance within me with not being like overly soft, boring, not challenging enough, not like tit for tat enough, not, you know, having all these witty replies to keep people engaged and feeling excited to where I would like say something where they never want to talk to me again. Cause I am very blunt. I am very blunt. I am very honest. I either talk too much and go overboard or don't say enough. So I'm still working on that. But I feel like everything happens for a reason and I'm right where I need to be. You know, like I'm, I am living my dream. I do wish I had more money, to be honest, but I'm working on that right now. So I'm so happy with what Shira has done. It has done nothing but benefit my life. Um, I know how to, you know, love myself. I love myself so much. I would never, I would never, you know, put myself in any type of dangerous situation. I say no when I don't want to do something. I prioritize myself first above all because that's the most important person in my life, myself. And if I'm not happy, I can't make anybody else happy. And... 
What else do I want to say? Oh yeah, another thing. You know, um, so some girls apply her advice and go out freestyle, get married, get their bills paid, you know, become like fully taken care of. I haven't had that experience. But another thing, you know, I've just, there's sometimes I interact with, I think wealthy men at places, I think so. But a lot of times they just don't like me. And that's okay because I know men are very smart. I think men are very smart. They sense energy right off the bat. You know, they know whether they like you or they don't. And a lot of them just don't like me. Like they'll buy perfume, they'll take me shopping, they'll buy a drink, you know, pay something and then be on their way. <laughs> but I feel like a lot of men just like don't like me and that's okay. I'm fully okay with that because I like myself. And I think that's what is great about her advice. She, she teaches she teaches you how to love yourself above all. I don't prioritize getting married anymore. I used to because I wanted to be taken care of, but I got this far. I'm like, I might as well keep going and build more and more and more. I don't prioritize what men think anymore. I don't prioritize being validated from a man anymore because I've given all that to myself and it's given me such a profound sense of peace to where I can't, I can't stoop so low anymore. You know, I want to stay at this vibration. I want to stay at this frequency to where I feel good and connected with God and the universe and just this lovely energy running through me. Another thing about this game is, you know, you do, you do have to be toxic if you want to play the game and trigger people. She she gives that advice, you know, openly and honestly. She says, you know, the best way to get a man attached to you is through his ego and through his wallet, which I wholeheartedly believe is true. But, you know, when I'm sometimes when I'm engaging with a man and I know just what to say to trigger him, I don't say it. And it's not because I'm scared to say it. It's just that. I would feel, I wouldn't feel right with myself. Like I would feel, like I, I would feel disgusted with myself the next day. And unfortunately that's a catch 22. If you're a woman like me, if you're more sensitive and more empathetic, you know, they say you, you get the energy you give out. I don't know if that's true, but there's just sometimes I just can't stoop. I just can't stoop low enough to play the game on an even playing field and that's my own flaw that's my own flaw and there's other times where i'd go overboard and say things that will make them never want to talk to me again and i've come a long ways with that too with controlling my emotions and not saying like things that are too far off the handle and just you know saying just enough to keep to keep the interest going but um you know we only have so much energy and you know as a sensitive person i do feel a bit uh handicapped when it comes to the game of men and women because um it's exhausting like i find it utterly exhausting playing the game but um, I think I'm still working at it. I think I'll get better at it eventually once I am able to fully create the life I want. Like I'm always working towards bettering myself and improving. And I feel like once I completely detach and I have so much money to where I could do anything I want and travel here and there, I feel like I would like, care way less because I'm not looking for help or assistance from anyone. And that's the best way to play the game. When you have, you know, all the money and then some, and you're not looking for anybody to take care of you, you're not looking for a handout, that's the best way to play it. Cause then you're coming from a position of power where you could take them or leave them. 
and I'm at that stage right now, even though I'm still living paycheck to paycheck, I don't have all the money I want. I'm at that stage right now just because I'm exhausted from trying and trying and trying and trying and not getting anywhere or just not meeting the right type of man or just meeting men who just simply don't like me. So it, it's kind of made me like giving up, which is good. I like being in this position because I don't really care anymore. So yeah. So yeah, those are my big takeaways about following Shira's advice. It will up level your mentality. And there are some days I like cry, you guys, because it's really... This advice is really eye-opening for women who didn't get this advice growing up. So you're gonna go out there, try and fail, try and fail, try and fail. And whether that's failing like socially, saying the wrong thing, or embarrassing yourself even, you know, socially, if you, you know, weren't the best, the, I don't know, maybe you had something that looked crazy on you and people were judging you or, you said something silly, you know, it's going to be a lot of trial and error <laughs> if you were just out here in the world willy nilly without much guidance. So there are some days I cried because I felt like the more I progressed, I would, I would think I was on the right track or I think I would level up so well. And then something would happen where I didn't know how to maneuver a situation. And then I felt like that would put me back and level me down again. And then I have to rebuild my self-esteem and try again. And then something else would happen that I didn't know or have the tools or equipment to deal with. And then I'd fall back into a slump again. But I kept going and I kept going and I kept going. Now I'm at the point where I feel completely comfortable with conversating with anyone, going out anywhere. I have outfits for all types of different events and I don't care about really dating anymore because it it just didn't work. I don't know, nothing worked for me. I mean, not not that anything didn't work for me, but I didn't find like like anybody who like liked me like that or vice versa. I didn't like anybody so far with all my times of freestyling and going out on dates and things like that. And I just feel like I finally become the woman of my dreams. Like, it's so funny when you're leveling up. It's like you forget where you were and you come to the state where it's like you want more, you want more, you want to grow more, but you don't remember how bad you used to be. You don't remember where you come. You don't remember how you used to dress. You don't remember how you used to talk. And when I think about like how far I've come, Especially when other women point it out, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> it makes me feel so good because I know I'm just going to get better from here and I'm glad, I'm kind of glad it never worked out because I never wanted to settle and being single is, it's so fun. Like I have all of this space to create, I have all this energy to create and nobody telling me what to do, what to say, like it's really it's really such a journey to have a blank canvas and be able to paint it how you want. And I feel like her advice, like, yeah, her advice gears towards relationships and finding a provider man, but it's so much more than that. It's so much more than that. And I'm just so thankful I came across her channel I'm so thankful I had the confidence to implement everything she said. I feel like I've lived so many different lives at this point <laughs> with leveling up and going out different places and being different people. I feel like, I just feel like I can do anything with this newfound confidence I have that I've built with loving myself, caring for myself, reaching my goals, putting myself out there. And I, I wish that all young girls, especially women of color, because a lot of times I feel like women of color are kept back intentionally and people don't teach them things that they should know. 
intentionally to like handicap them or keep them back or I don't know I, I can't fathom like the mentality somebody would have to want to not share or help you know a young girl in the world on how to behave and what the world is like like I don't know why that would be a secret you know if I have a daughter that's the first thing I'm telling her about life how to get her money what not to do who to avoid you know I'm telling I'm running down the whole game of life to her when she's like zero <laughs> I don't know why people would try to withheld that information from you but I felt like I don't know my parents just wanted to cling on me for dear life and keep me forever that's disgusting but I'm glad I found her channel <laughs> before it was too late <laughs> and I'm glad I was able to go out into the world and have the confidence to build myself up and uh, I am behind in life. I am behind because, you know, I should have been taught this stuff way earlier. And um, I don't care. I'm just excited. I'm just excited because I know I see a lot of women uh, in my family who have died not knowing that they were Kamishka, not knowing that uh, that maybe what they were doing wasn't in their best interest. And I just didn't want to be like that. I don't want to, I don't want to die like running on a hamster wheel during the, doing the wrong thing. You know, I've read books, I've took therapy, I've done courses, I'm going to do more courses. I'm in different women's group, you know, I had to fight, I had to fight <laughs> to find this information that should have been taught to me. And that is so messed up. Like, I don't know why people try to keep this information hidden from black women. It's like, what are they afraid of? Like, why don't they want us to know this? It's like, are we that powerful? They got to keep us in the dark. What are they afraid of? And um, I don't know. It's just baffling to me. I'm telling everybody. <laughs>